we're going to be talking about autism today, specifically how to deal with it, what it is, and everything that surrounds diet and living a healthy ancestral lifestyle to support autism. So what is it? It is a neurological disorder which impacts people day to day. Um, myself, my symptoms are very different to other people's. I can communicate quite effectively. Um, I do sometimes mumble. I do stumble on my words a lot. Um, I'm not always the most succinct person, but I do try my best to be. Um, the evidence of this is that this video itself is somewhat scripted. Um, a lot of these videos are scripted. So, you know, is it noticeable? Do people notice that you have autism? I find that one of the most, almost like the most paradoxical ideas around in terms of cognitive health. Um, is it that a person looks autistic? Not really. I mean, I couldn't tell one person from the next. There are some times underlying features of someone's behavior, which can demonstrate that perhaps they do have autism. Um, their social skills, the communication, the ability to maintain eye contact. Notice I'm looking at the camera right now, but most of the time when you see me in these videos, I'll be looking around here, 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 here. You know, that's how I am. I suffer with something called synesthesia, um, something which sounds very like bizarre, you know. You're adding to your, your conditions. No, what it is, is that when I talk, I speak, I see different things, and it's very different to schizophrenia. It's not that I see things that aren't there, although I see things that I'm saying. So for example, if I'm reading a book or anything like that, I can be overwhelmed by what I'm seeing. Um, it makes it very difficult or nearly impossible for me to read a book in terms of a fictional story. Um, think of I think think of times back in the past when I'd watch, watch um, Harry Potter in the you know the film. I can understand it very well. It's very, you know, visual, mental, you know, I can absorb the information quite well. Um, same with sound, because I'm listening to one format of communication. But when talking to someone, I'll often lose track of what they're saying. And it's frustrating because it's not that I'm not listening, but often I find that I get too too involved with what they're saying in the conversation. That can be quite frustrating. Um, that's some that's a feature of autism that I first suffer a lot with. So you'll see in these videos, you'll see sometimes people comment on my videos, you ramble too much, you mumble, this, that, and the other. I don't care. Look at my likes ratio, look at my dislikes. That's it just shows shows you, you know, people appreciate what I can do. Um, if you don't like that, you can tune out. I'm not, you're not obliged to watch this video. You're not obliged to subscribe to me. You're not obliged to like or even comment on it. You know, just tune out. But what I do aim to do is provide people with information that is based on my experience, my knowledge, and what I've seen in the real world. So there's a current stigma about autism. Um, you might think in the severe end, people like the Rain Man. Um, maybe from a few years, well, probably a few decades back at this point. Um, that's a severe savant case. Um, a savant is someone that has extreme skills, but in very limited capacities. So, for example, they might be extremely good at uh, graphs, data, numbers, spelling, words, but very poor in terms of social communication. Um, some people might think about Sheldon Cooper from Big Bang Theory. He can communicate, but he's quite awkward, quite difficult to get along with. Um, there's almost that disconnect between him and other people. So that's there's, there's two sort of ends of it, really. Um, and I think one of the most damaging people things people can say about autism is that there is uh, very autistic people or not so autistic people. The, the, the outlying feature of autism is that you cannot perform enough functions sufficiently to cope in a normal real life world setting that functioning however differs from person to person so that's why you should never say to someone you don't seem autistic you know <laughs> obviously people that are autistic watching this video will completely relate to me and they'll understand what i'm saying straight away um now some of the issues that people also have are things like the sensory side so for example myself i don't like touching fluffy objects i despise it I also don't like heat very much. Um, my idea of sleeping well at night is having a nice cold water bottle on each of my sides, um, probably with a cold pillow under my head. That feels great to me. Heat, I don't like it, especially my hands. Gloves, scarves, even socks I don't like wearing, but 
obviously you put some shoes on, you kind of have to wear socks. So, you know, it goes hand in hand there. Um, so you'll lose eye contact. And that's another feature of autism that people probably know quite well. Um, some things not spoken about much, although seem to be extremely prevalent in the autism community. One of them is digestive disorders. Um, that doesn't mean you have necessarily ulcerative colitis, diverticulitis, Crohn's disease. It means you just got a bad gut. It means your, your gut's just not tolerating things well. Uh, medications have profound effects on you. Um, food you eat greatly impacts you versus someone without these issues might be completely fine. Um, people like myself have to be much stricter with their diet than others. So when I give out this information about diet later on this video, bear in mind your tolerability will be different to mine. It might be worse than mine also. So bear that in mind. We also have something which is a bit like black and white thinking. So we have this idea that things must be done a certain way, or if they're not, then it's catastrophic. Um, and I've experienced that a lot of times. And usually people like myself, we, we do come to the conclusions we have for a lot of thought. We're very much, I'd say we're very much, but I'd say we're mostly introverted people. The vast majority of people that I've met that are autistic are introverted. They internalize their thoughts. They don't vocalize things very well. And some people that might cause them hassle, might cause them stress. Um, you have to have an outlet to mitigate that problem. So the other things are, um, I'm very guilty of this, and many of my subscribers will probably know, um, I'm hyper-focused on different things. I have intense passions, interests, fixations. That doesn't necessarily mean I only like one thing. Um, people see me as a bodybuilder and think, you only like bodybuilding, that's all you know. I like everything to do with health, nutrition, um, two different, different topics. It just so happens that the three things that I'm very interested in overlap. Um, but I do study each one of those topics very meticulously. Um, bodybuilding aside, there's the the training side of it. So the muscle building workouts, you know, I think about that as well. Um, oftentimes I'm guilty of daydreaming about working out. Um, it seems obsessive, but when one of the only times you get mental relief from the stimulation you receive from the outside world is in a gym and you're focusing in on a set, you know, there's there's that element of it as well. Also, people with autism have desired outcomes that perhaps might not be of any meaning to people. It might be that we have to do things a certain way. It might be that we have a routine that we have to follow. That isn't everyone that is autistic, but it seems to be more often than not. We run at a high stress rate. Um, resilience to stress can be very low. And when you, it's a double-edged sword. So when you're diagnosed with autism, you then become hyper aware of how you act around people. Um, that can really lead you to be probably more stressed because you think this person now knows that I'm autistic. How are they going to treat me? Are they going to treat me differently? So this is something I've had to think a lot about over the last few years. Um, I was only diagnosed, strangely enough, at the age of, I think, 21, which was very late for, for people, um, especially as, let's say, over the last 10, 20 years, the topic of autism, how it affects people has been very prevalent. Um, there's always talks nowadays about autism and diet and mental health and all these things are on the rise now, you know. Um, other than that, so what are some possible causes? Now, I'm going to list some of these, but not necessarily all of them. Um, there will be people in the chat or comments below that will say, I know about this and this has caused this and I don't have an hour to write a video about all these different things. Um, you know, it's, there's um, just there's limited things we can talk about in this time. But I'd say one of the main things that I've noticed that has improved my symptoms of autism is the, the diet. Um, so my reducing the deficiencies that I might have. If you look at studies on autistic people, so not just uh, adults, but children as well, uh, most studies seem to be on children. There is definitely a bias towards that in terms of the research field. Um, you'll see time and time again, they're deficient in so many things. Um, I'll, I'll name a few of them. So oftentimes it's choline, carnitine, tyrosine, omega-3, folate, magnesium, iron, vitamin D, and sometimes protein. Um, now, when someone is being developed in the womb, so i.e. a fetus, um, the mother is responsible for the feed of that child. 
sometimes in cases where the parent is unable to or cannot eat different foods, it might be vegetarian, that can lead to autism. It's well documented that if you reduce the aforementioned things within your diet, your symptoms will get worse. Um, there seems to be a very clear link here. Um, associative, but when enough people say it, I get enough pe feedback from other people saying the same thing that I do. I can only assume it's the right thing. Um, so I will say that as a little side note. Another thing is toxic heavy metals. So we have a lot of that in the food that we take in. Uh, and also some of the things that we have in our environment, which perhaps people don't often think about. Um, things like the, the fillings. Um, there's things in there which can seriously damage us. Um, and that they get into our bloodstream, then eventually build up the toxicity level. Uh, other, way, other things than that are probably poor detoxification pathways. So often people like myself have poor detoxification pathways. So we have to mitigate that by Im improving that pathway. Where we do that for a proper diet, um, including some of the things I mentioned before, choline, um, the folate, all those other things, vitamin D, they all work in a symbiotic way to improve our uh, symptoms. Other things as well, which people don't think about are the excessive non-native EMFs. So things in our environment, computer technology, mobile phones, that can increase the symptoms of autism. There'll probably be a thing, scammer below this video saying, incorrect information. We know it's true. We know it's true, you know? Um, so yeah, there's something to think about as well. And even if it's not just so much the EMF exposure itself, so think about the blue light as well. So are you getting appropriate sunlight throughout the day and getting less blue light at night? Is your phone being switched off at night? I'm guilty of not doing that myself. Um, I do notice with people, they often state that when they switch all the wife off in their house, the different technology that they have goes off, they're able to sleep better and that can only improve symptoms. So you know, there's a, there's a clear link there. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is reversing autism. Now, when I was diagnosed, I had a relatively high score on the autism spectrum scale. Um, to much people's surprise, it was a lot higher than what you think. Um, some of the symptoms I have are very, very well masked, but that's due to my upbringing. Um, I was well socialized with other people when I was younger, when I was a child, and that did allow me to almost adapt and become better at what I do. And that I can communicate with people better than some autistic people. Not the best, but I'm definitely not too bad. Um, the cognitive wiring of an autistic person will also always be different. We can reduce some of those negative symptoms and improve upon the positive symptoms. So summing up, eliminate deficiencies of vitamins and minerals. Maximize intestinal permeability. So improve your gut wall. Reduce things that aren't appropriate to you so perhaps you have a chronic alcohol problem you eat lots of bad foods you consume lots of fiber um, you consume lots of plant anti-nutrients they will all damage your gut wall again this is somewhat dependent on the person um, i'm someone that is very what's the word non-resilient to these things if i have plants in my diet i will feel worse it's very cause and effect, not just, I'm guessing, I've added it in, taken it out so many times, I can say, without a doubt, it definitely doesn't help me. Um, by doing what I just mentioned about improving your gut wall, you'll also improve your nutrient absorption. So you, by doing that, you also maximize your nutrient density within the diet. So what I recommend to people is to do a carnivore diet. It's, it might not be just beef and lamb like some people do, it can just be a mix. It can be dairy, eggs, fish, meat, poultry, whatever you like, you know. I prefer to focus on oily fish or omega-free and try and get extra choline from eggs. That seems to be something that has very much improved my symptoms. I'm not perfect at all, but I'm better than what I was a year ago from now. Um, some people also try liver and awful. Um, other organ meats are also okay. Um, nothing really wrong with them. I wouldn't advise having them every day, especially not to the large amounts that you see some people online nowadays doing. Um, address also the thought patterns that you have. So learn to decode social situations rationally and calmly. Understand that some things 
people may not understand about you. So you have to be able to, you know, calm down, be on the back foot and think, okay, this person is trying to communicate with me, this problem or this situation, how am I going to resolve it with them? Another thing that I've tried is cognitive behavioral therapy. I've tried that actually three times now in my lifetime. Um, I'm only 27, but I have found it effective and it doesn't work for everyone. But part of that, I believe, is the willingness to adapt and overcome by using CBT to your advantage. So it means you don't just sit there in a counseling session and listen to what they've got to say and just brush it over your head. You know, think carefully about what they're saying and how it can kind of help you, help you and affect your mental health outcomes or different symptoms. If CBT, however, isn't an option, talk with family and friends. Make them aware of your symptoms. Oftentimes people will get ignored because people in the autistic community cannot communicate properly. Um, oftentimes they're quite awkward people. I don't mean this to be aff aff offensive, but it is. it can be that way. Um, you know, I'm awkward as hell sometimes. That's just it. You know, you just got to think, well, are these people in your life going to accept you for who you are? Or are they going to dispel you, discriminate against you and make you feel bad for who you are? So get the right people on your side and get rid of the bad people. There's also online forums which people might find useful. Um, often people find peace knowing that other people are in the same boat. And don't be afraid to ask for help and support. And oftentimes you have to take that support as well. Understanding sometimes it can be challenging and almost overwhelming to experience the thought that other people can help you. You know, because you seem very alone in this world because ultimately you're, you make up a fraction of a percentage of everyone around there, perhaps more at this point, I don't know. But there are not many autistic people. I don't run into many. Um, another thing you can try is grounding or earthing. This can maximize your detoxification pathways and this will enhance your glutathione production. So this is one of those things which, if you can get it up to an appropriate level, that will help you detox your body from the things that it doesn't need and keep in the good things that it does need. I would also advise to make feeling better a new passion project. It's okay to have more than one passion. Um, myself, mine has always been helping other people. Um, I don't have a superhero complex or anything, but I've seen a lot of sick people in my time, an absurd amount of sick people, not just a few. I'm talking about hundreds at this point. And it does get to you, and I can empathize a lot of people when they suffer with the problems that they have. Um, every time I think that what I'd like to be known by when I'm gone one day, it's that I'm helping people. Um, it's something I definitely consider a lot when I go about my day. Therefore, I'm making videos like this and openly speaking about my issues on here. I've had some criticism from people before, say I ramble or I mumble. It doesn't bother me. Um, when you look at the bigger picture, look how many people that respond positively to the videos I make. They're not perfect, they're not great, but they're there and it might help some, some people. So it might not be that you want to be a YouTuber and do this sort of thing. But you might be part of a social group. Don't discriminate against yourself in that case. So be your, be your own best friend and trust in yourself and your abilities. Um, often people don't know my past. They can't judge who I am. And they can't judge who you are either. Take the positives in your stride. Don't let one criticism of your autistic character drag you down, defeat who you are. They haven't experienced your strengths yet. When they do, they'll be eating their words. So why am I qualified or experienced to talk about these things? I've tried them and between them, they do work quite effectively. Between the things I have mentioned previously, I can attest for a few of them and they are very effective. It might not be that you try all of them. Maybe try one of the things, try another and accumulate an idea of what you're going to benefit from the most. You'll, you'll get an idea of that as time goes on. And for those of you that don't know, I live in a predominantly ketogenic state. This helps me balance my mood, stabilize my blood sugar, reduces cravings. And what I have noticed is that sugar is one of the biggest things keeping me away from my goals. How can one thing within a diet do that? Try taking it out, give it a month, give it two months, and tell me how much better you feel. I focus a lot on recovery and sleep. I aim to reduce EMF and blue light exposure at night. I try to get more natural sunlight early in the day. Even if it means opening up your curtains on a dark day, get out there, wait for the sun to rise, look outside, have a have a great morning, you know. I know how much suffering can be if I derail from my 
eating patterns, my routine. It just sets me further away from my health and well-being goals. So I strongly advise you commit to a plan and stick to it. If you like this video, please leave a comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you.